Hi, and welcome to Getting Started with Rules Engine. My name is Dave Malone, and I am an IoT Solutions Architect for AWS. In this tutorial, we will cover Rules Engine, a feature of AWS IoT Core which makes it easy to route device data to and from AWS services. Rules Engine makes it possible to build IoT applications that gather, process, analyze, and act on data generated by your devices without having to manage any infrastructure. For example, you can evaluate incoming messages and route them to AWS services, including AWS IoT Analytics or Events, AWS Lambda, Amazon Kinesis, Amazon S3, Amazon Simple Notification Service, and many more. In this video, I will show you how to create a rule to select data from MQTT topics, then transform, filter, and enrich data using SQL-like statements, and then route the data to other AWS services via actions. To follow along with this demo, you will need a device or devices registered and have a device SDK which are publishing messages to the AWS IoT Core Broker. If you are following along from the IoT Quick Connect video, I will be using the same device setup later in this video. I'm gonna start by showing you where rules exist in the AWS IoT console. After logging into the AWS Management Console, I will navigate to the AWS Core Services. Once within the AWS IoT console, I'm going to go ahead and click the ACT menu on the left-hand navigation menu. Go ahead and click Rules. And next, let's go ahead and click Create a Rule. This is where I will be creating my rule, doing my transforms and filters, and then routing data via actions. But before I get to that, I need to create my demo data. Now, if you're following along from the IoT Quick Connect video, we created demo data based on a fictional company that makes thermostats. So we'll create this data that emits random temperature values. This program uses the Python Thing SDK to publish temperature data over an MQTT topic through AWS IoT Core. I'm going to go ahead and launch the program and have it start publishing the temperature data at random through a well-known MQTT topic. Going back into the AWS console, we're going to use the test portion of the AWS IoT console where I can check to make sure that I'm actually receiving the messages. Here, I'm gonna to subscribe to the topic that I'm publishing to. In this case, I have a topic structure that looks like this, and I'm gonna use a wildcard at the end so that I can subscribe to any device messages that come in on one subtopic level lower than the given topic structure that you see here. Go ahead and click on subscribe to topic. Now you can see that the messages are flowing through on this expected topic structure. Now that we've confirmed that our data is flowing through the AWS IoT test console, we're gonna go ahead and go back into the act portion of the AWS IoT console, where we'll create a rule. Note that you cannot use any spaces in the name of the rule, but we can use underscore. For the purposes of this demo, we're going to go ahead and use demo underscore rule as the name. For the rule query statement, we're going to go ahead and leave the selected SQL version to the default. You can learn more about the values here in the AWS IoT Core documentation. Next, you'll see a text area where you can write your SQL-like statements to query incoming messages from your MQTT topics. There's a helpful link right above the box to see what SQL statements are supported today. We're going to start by selecting the same MQTT topic that we used in the test console to subscribe to our messages. In this case, 
the rules engine also supports wildcards. Next, we can select which actions to use when our query criteria are met to route message data to other AWS services. As I mentioned earlier, you can see all the different actions you can take across AWS services, such as inserting the message into a DynamoDB table, sending a message to an Amazon Kinesis data stream, or sending the data along to a Lambda function for more advanced and flexible data processing. In our use case, we're going to imagine that we have thermostats that are running in a restaurant freezer environment and we want to send a notification to the restaurant manager and the restaurant owner if the freezer temperature goes above freezing in degrees Fahrenheit in events where maybe the freezer door was accidentally left open or the freezer just malfunctioned. So we're gonna go ahead and select send a message to an SNS push notification to allow a text message to be sent to recipients that are interested in receiving this event. Next, we'll need to either create or select an existing SNX topic. In this case, I've already pre-created an SNS topic, which I'll use for this demo. However, the console has the ability to help you create an SNS topic for targeting here. For the message format, it supports two options, raw or JSON. Next, you'll also need to select the role that you're going to grant AWS IoT access to perform this action. This is an IAM role that allows AWS IoT Core to access the SNS service on your behalf. You can either create the role or select an existing role. And go ahead and click Create Action. Now, it's actually best practice to also create a corresponding error action that would be executed in case something goes wrong with processing the rule. However, we're not going to configure that as part of this demo. For more information on that, please see the AWS IoT Core documentation. And one last thing before we're finished, we're going to go back to our rules query statement. We actually only want to send an SNS notification if the temperature is in fact over our desired temperature. So I will edit our SQL statement, adding our filter in the rule statement, adding the where clause, and a measurement evaluation where the temperature is greater than 31 degrees Fahrenheit. Finally, go ahead and click Create Rule. Now, at this point, if I select the rule, you can see that it's enabled and it should be processing any data that is coming in to our desired topics based on the SQL query and sending a message out via simple notification service for any messages that meet our criteria, say if the sensor reads 33 degrees Fahrenheit. So in this video, we walked through Rules Engine and set up a rule based on incoming messages on our temperature topic, and then we added a filter via our SQL-like query to only apply the rule if the message exceeded our threshold of 31 degrees Fahrenheit. And finally, we set up an action to trigger a push notification via Simple Notification Service to notify any interested parties that this criteria has been met.